Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. So today's video we're going to be working on a waterfall folio or scrapbook if that's what you want to call it. Um, I'm going to have links below to the two videos that inspired me. Um, one was from my sister scrapper and the other is from actually scrapbooking with me um, where Miss Edith has created one very similar. So I'm going to share mine using the spring market uh, collection that I got as far as my DT design my design package for this month and the first thing I'm doing here is I'm trimming down my pattern paper so that it would be 10 and a half by 12 and then I'm going to score a one inch all around the four sides so once I get it in, I'm just going to do one inch, turn, one inch, turn it again, one inch. And then I wasn't 100% sure on scoring the last one, so I brought my chipboard over just to make sure everything was going to fit correctly. And it is, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it and do one last one inch score. And once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and put score tape on the back of all of our pieces. And we're going to go ahead and get those attached. And the score lines are going to help us line it up to make sure that all of our chipboard pieces are lined, aligned basically on the same plane. So once I take off the backing, I'm going to grab some art glitter glue. And of course, I think last the last time I used it, I didn't put the pin in right away. So I just had to kind of clear it out and then it's flowing fine. So we're going to go ahead and get this put down. And I should have did all my folding at the very beginning. Of course, I didn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold those over real quick. Just so I can at least see where the two are meeting here at the bottom and along my side. And then we're going to do the same thing with our other piece. Now the chipboards, I did cut off screen. And so you can write that down. Your chipboard pieces are four and a half by eight and a half. You need two of those. And then you need the spine to be three and a fourth by eight and a half. And we put the two... Um, the two big pieces, the four and a half by eight and a half pieces on first, and then that way we can balance the spine piece in between the two. And then just taking the backing off of that. And I will make sure to tag uh, or tag to put the link down below for the chipboard that you can get from the shop, which is what I'm using here. I I love it. I, I always I actually need to get some more. But I like how this particular project, you can use one sheet of chipboard paper and get um, all your pieces for this project off that one. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Tim Holtz ruler and the dash lines that you see on that, those are your eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to line one of the dotted lines along the points. And I'm drawing uh, basically a mortar line. Because what we're going to do, or mortar, I said mortar, miter. <laughs> uh, but once I have the line drawn, I'm just going to lay down my score tape. So that way, one, I'm not wasting a whole bunch. I can use the lines as, you know, a guide for where I'm putting the score tape. And once I did all the outside lines, I'm also going to put some along the edge of my chipboard pieces. And we're just going to finish this up with that one. And go ahead and take your bone folder along your score tape, making sure that it's adhering. And then we're going to cut our edges off. I like using the shears for this one because they're a little bit longer and it's like one cut and you're done. Um, but if you have just the regular Tim Holtz scissors or regular scissors, either way, it doesn't matter. You just want to cut those angles off so that way it makes it 
um, a lot neater when you're uh, truing up your edges. Once I take that off, I'm going to put a little bit of the glitter glue in between the spot where we're going to have the score tape. I just want to make sure everything is heared really well. And I like to do the tops and the bottoms. And then I save my side pieces for last. All right. And now once you have your top and your bottom done, this is what you want to do. The little corners on the side, you wanna, you're going to fold them in using your bone folder. So that way it's covering the points of your chipboard. That's how you make sure it's being, it's wrapped fully. And on this side, I'm going to try and zoom in here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Do you see that little, that, there's a little bit of fa uh, paper right there, if I can get it to focus, that I'm just folding over to make sure that our corner edge is covered. And then, give me a second. Okay. I think right here is when I go to zoom out after a while just to make sure that all four edges are nice and put down. And then you want to work your fold lines. And I always try and use the bone folder to kind of help it along so that way you don't wind up ripping or breaking the paper because this particular paper from Echo Park on the 12 by 12 it's actually it's really thick paper um, so you just want to make sure that you work it well now I will say this as we start to do our inside page your inside if you're doing one solid piece is going to be eight and an eighth by nine and five eighths here's the deal I personally would rather do um, my pieces differently. I think if I had a chance to go back and redo this, um, I would do two separate pieces instead of doing one big piece only because, how do I explain? You'll see as I go along here, but I have buckling issues. It always seems like it creates bubbles when I put down the large piece and then go to try and fold it again to make sure that everything is creasing correctly. I don't know why, but it drives me nuts. So I find myself trying to work it, um, trying not to press so hard that I create um, cuts either, you know what I mean? Because I want it to lay right. And I had gotten it actually to lay down pretty well except for the fact that it wasn't opening and it should have opened back up fine it shouldn't have been like slightly open partially it should have laid back flat and it was driving me nuts and I left this in here so that you guys could see you know it doesn't always work perfect <laughs> No matter what people show you in videos, it doesn't always happen exactly the way you've envisioned. So, and when times like that happen, then you got to get this product that's called Undo. And it's amazing. Because um, what I did at this point, because it was really making me mad, and I already noticed that I was starting to rip my paper on the outside, I grabbed, stopped the video, I grabbed the Undo, and I took it off to try and work on this and, you know, make it lay the way that I, I want it to. And I'm just fixing those little spots that I told you were starting to crack. And once we get those fixed, then I'm going to work on fixing the inside. So I'm just showing you the undo, which is wonderful. Because it doesn't mess up your paper and now I got it laying correctly and it's open exactly the way I wanted it to. So for our waterfall, the um, pages that we're going to use for our flaps, you're going to create a base that is seven and three fourths by four inches. All right. And 
I want to say in the My Sister Scrapper video, she put a pocket on one side and then had the waterfall on the other. For this particular one that I'm going to do, I'm going to do two waterfalls. I want one on each side, which is, um, I think, how Miss Edith did on her video. And all we're going to do is just we round the edge, the bottom edge, and then we're going to attach this to the right side. And then we'll wind up doing the same exact thing for the left side of the album. And if you decide that you want to use a flap to go to hold down your pages, you can do that. I would just make sure to attach it here before I um, attach on my bases. I always like to attach my flap to the base before I flap, you know, put it down to the actual book. So that way you know it's nice and secure. Um, and just make sure that whatever the length is, it would be, let's see, we need it to be eight and a half. Not eight and a half, seven and three fourths. So I would just add at least a half an inch to that, half an inch to a quarter of an inch. So that way you have a little bit of a flap that you can attach it to. And then you'll have a little flap that will go over your folio pieces. Okay, so on these, these pages right here, the little, our flaps, are going to be um, four by four and a half. And then you're going to score on the four and a half side at a half an inch. So you're making your um, flaps for where you're going to attach to the actual board. Okay, once you have that scored, then you're going to do your edges and attach your score tape. And once the score tape is attached, we can start putting on all of our waterfalls. And I do mine upside down because I like to be able to see where I'm putting that first one because your first piece is going to dictate how the rest of the waterfall goes down. So once I get the first one on, making sure it's nice and even, if I don't like where it's down, undo. You get that undo and fix it because there are instances where if you don't do it straight, you can make the whole thing crooked. And actually, I want to say at the end on one of the flaps, it does go a little bit to the right, even though I lined it up pretty well. So there's, I, I haven't figured out exactly why that happens, but the key is to try and have as much light as you can so you can make sure that you are lining your page up to that flap. And you can see all of our pages are attached. And now what I did was we have seven flaps, okay? And you want photos or papers on each of the flaps. So on seven, if you times it by two, that would be 14 plus the base that you put down, there will be a spot for you to be able to put a photo there. So on one side, you're gonna need 15 sheets of paper. And for the left side, you're going to need another 15 sheets of paper. So all together, it's going to be 30 pieces that are cut to, and I did mine 3 and 7 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths. So that way, in the end, if you did your photo like a three and three fourths by three and three fourths photo, you would have a little bit of a border of the pattern paper. If you make it smaller, then obviously you'll see more of the actual pattern. And then here, all I'm doing is laying out which ones I want, where, you know, the order and the, the sequence of the patterns. And once I have them laid out, then I know where I need to punch my decorative corner because you don't want to do your boots on the wrong side and next thing you know your boots are upside down or your uh, words the pattern the the one paper that I'm using that has the words on it would be upside down and we're not trying to do that so I always like to lay them out first make sure I have them facing the direction I need them and then I do my corner punch and attach as I go 
and once I have them laid out if it looks like it's not I don't like the pattern that I move it around figure it out and then you have boom you're done And I will say on this one, the bottom, for some reason, it was a little bit shorter. There was a lot more room. Um, when I taught this to my crop group, we get together almost every month. Um, on, and when we did, I want to say I added another flap. So instead of it being seven, we did eight. Um it just makes that bottom piece a little bit smaller but when I laid it down and you'll see here as we go through it the bottom piece there's a little bit more space between the pattern paper and that edge of the flap but it didn't bother me I kept going I put a little bit of decorations on the outside and the back with some chipboard pieces and some stickers and this one is done it is very um quick and easy especially by doing the two waterfalls on each side because then you're just basically doing the same steps on each side of the album and then i just did a little bit of decorating on the front i'm not exactly sure what i want to do with this yet but you could even make this um a small little recipe book you know you could make it just small photos of the family, um, of mom, you know, give it to mom for Mother's Day. There's a lot of different things you can do with these, and they're just, they're really fun to make. I love making them. Um, I don't even really put photos in my, <laughs> but I just like making them. So, there you have it. So, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and share button. And at the very end, I will have photos of previous sketch videos. And if you go to scrapbookingwithme.com, make sure you use my coupon code, which is TT15. Thank you guys, and I hope you have a great day.